Hatchback Come Estate is Czech brand's attempt to take a share of fiercely fought hatchback sales. Ever since the Skoda Scala first came along in 2019, it has hit on the idea of putting a bigger hatchback body onto an existing Super Mini model platform in order to deliver to market an equally spacious but better value car than the average family five-door. Not only is this the idea that the modern Dacia brand is founded on, but it's likewise what both the Skoda Rapid and Rapid Space back before it tried, and it's what the car continues to do now that it's had its major midlife facelift in 2024. Design and Styling The Scala is designed in line with the taller Skoda Kamik crossover, to which it's closely related, which means it gets the same headlights and exterior styling touches, digital instruments and material cabin trims, a few other bits of equipment, and a revised range of engines. The car's exterior styling certainly adds a bit of welcome intrigue, even with some interesting design, details scattered around its front bumper and rear profile, the Scala suggests itself as a car intended to appeal to a more rational side of mind than an emotional one, a trait that has come to define the vast majority of Skoda's products over the past few years, and which has brought it a good deal of success at that. At 4,362 mm overall, the Scala's only marginally shorter than a Focus and longer than a Golf. Yet it sits on an extended version of the Volkswagen Group's MQB AO Super Mini platform, as opposed to the regular MQB architecture that underpins its internal rival. We tested the range topping 1.5 TSI petrol, which develops one for 8 bhp and 180 for pounds feet in both 7 speed dual clutch automatic gearbox and standard 6 speed manual guises. The mid-range 1.0 TSI 116 is now also 6 speed manual, as standard, the entry level 1.0 TSI 95 still 5 speed manual. Interior In a similar vein to its exterior, the supposedly new age design of the Scala's cabin doesn't represent a big departure from what we've come to expect from Skoda. Functionality and convenience continue to be prioritized, however, and they are epitomized by familiar, simply clever features such as the umbrella holster in the door, the ticket holder on the driver's side a pillar, the lined dustbin in the driver's door, and ice scraper in the fuel filler door. This focus on convenience has long been a big draw for the brand, and no doubt, it will be for the Scala too. That extended MQBAO platform pays dividends when it comes to interior space. Although the Scala's 2.65 meter wheelbase is shorter than that of the Ford Focus, Skoda has nonetheless been able to liberate an impressive amount of rear legroom. Cabin width is tighter though, again due to the restrictions of the Super Mini grade model platform, a lot more comfortable across the second row for two occupants than three. In a testament to Skoda's news for smart interior packaging, the Scala also offers plenty of boot space with the 60-40th split folding rear seats in place. This stands at 467 liters, extending to 1410 liters with the seats folded down. By comparison, the Golf and the Focus come up short with respective seats up storage capacities of 380 liters and 375 liters. Engines and Performance Skoda's six-speed gearbox in this car is key to making the most of that engine. However, we wouldn't be keen to drop down to the entry-level 90 for BHP petrol engine with its five-speed transmission for fear of the longer-feeling gearing, making the performance feel a bit ponderous. You might expect few Scala buyers to stump up for the car's range, topping petrol auto powertrain combination, but those who do won't get less value for money. It is the 1.5 TS eyes roll within the wider Scala engine, line up to be the refined, slick, unobtrusive, and well-mannered option in the range. It hits 60 miles per hour in just under 8 seconds, not at all shabby for a practical family car of such humble ambitions. One gripe we have with it, however, relates to turbo lag. Below 2,500 revolutions per minute the engine has very little in the way of meaningful shove to the extent where you find yourself changing down to stay within its optimal rev band, which isn't the most fuel-efficient solution. Mechanical refinement is certainly competitive, however. Inside the car at 50 miles per hour noise meter, registered 60 for decibels for the 1.5-liter model, which is only to decibels more than we found in the Ford Focus. 
Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for other latest videos. Thank you.